What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be checking out the brand new Razer Huntsman Mini. Their 60% gaming keyboard with brand new improved linear optomechanical switches. So if you're thinking of picking it up but you want to know more, got you covered in this review. So checking it out, we have the new 60% form factor with an aluminum top plate and plastic bottom. And while this is obviously the white version, Razer is also selling this in a black variant as well. Now, 60% keyboards are definitely more of a hit trend in recent years. Not only does it save space on your desktop overall, but lots of people prefer this as well because it gives them more room to use your mouse when you're gaming at a lower DPI, or if you just have a lot of big, you know, arm swipes going on. I also like a 60% layout because it's really simple to customize and make it your own. So Razer also kept some popular adoptions from their previous Huntsman Tournament Edition keyboard, including the detachable USB-C cable, double shot PBT keycaps, and a standard bottom row. This is great because like I just said, it gives you the option now to switch it up and make it all stand out. I swapped their stock included white USB-C cable with a matching white coiled aviator cable that I got from Tez Cables. I'll drop a link for that down below. And it might just be a matter of personal opinion, but I always think adding a nice coil cable to your keyboard can really elevate the look of it. But again, that's just me. Some people like them, some people don't. But what's also great is Razer is also selling their very own color matching PBT keycaps to the rest of their product lineup. Meaning you can get it in the mercury white like we have here, quartz which is the soft pink color, black which makes for a nice panda theme going on with the whiteboard here, or their neon Razer green keycap set. And these PBT keycaps are oil resistant and have a nice texture to them, they're thicker and still allow for that nice RGB shine through. They're also only $30 which is a really good price for keycaps. Now with that being said, I just used the colored keycaps on the modifiers and WASD. So if you do deck out the whole keyboard in a brand new set, you will lose the included side printed functions that come on the stock keycaps. And since this board is 60% and you have less physical keys, you still do have access to them with the function key and then the actual functions like media keys, brightness, arrow keys, macro recordings, they're all side printed on the keys which helps you identify which is which. Then on the back side, when you flip it over, we do have two feet, a six degree and a nine degree angle to elevate the back side, plus four rubberized pads, doesn't slide around or ruin your desktop. But also, even though you can't see it on the bottom, I really like the branding typeface here with the four gamers by gamers. It's embossed into the bottom. You can't see it, but it looks nice. But next I wanna talk about their brand new linear switches because these are a newer version of their optomechanical linear switches. These red linear switches were first introduced back with the Tournament Edition keyboard. And while they felt nice and smooth, one thing they definitely suffered from was rattle and that nasty pinging resonance it had when typing. Razer claimed to have completely fixed this with this keyboard using silicone dampeners and factory loop switches. So literally the first thing I did when I got this board in was, you know, crack it open, open it up. There are 13 screws holding it together on the top plate. And when I got them all out and took it apart, I was expecting to see some sort of dampening material. I just figured they meant maybe some sort of silicone dampening insert, something like that. So I thought that was gonna be on the inside lining it, but that wasn't the case. And it's actually something they applied to the switches themselves, which is pretty interesting. So I popped one of the switches out of the PCB to get a closer look at it because I really wanted to see what's going on. And these switches do not crack open like a traditional switch does. So I did have to sacrifice one for the sake of this video. But after a few seconds of breaking it all down, I found these silicone dampeners were actually embedded into the stem of the switch. It's this red silicone strip, as you can see, and it does blend in pretty well with the switch, which is nice. But yeah, there's these two strips of silicone implemented on each side of the stem, and that's what makes this completely different when typing or gaming. And yes, we'll do a sound test in a minute to show you, don't worry. Now, comparing these to the original linear optomechanical switch, again, at first glance, they look pretty much the same, despite the new gray housing here, which is just to make it look more in unison with the white keyboard. But if you take a closer look, you can see that deeper red silicone strip on the side of the new switch that the older ones obviously do not have. Now, Razer did say, as I mentioned before, that they also did factory lube these switches. However, upon further inspection and just completely taking the switches apart, as you see, I didn't see any residue anywhere on the stem, the spring, the inside of the housing. And I'm not saying they lied about that or anything because, you know, why would they? Uh, but I just didn't see any indication that lube was applied here. Everything was dry. I did reach out to them. So if I hear anything or get a follow up uh, from the time that I'm filming this video, I'll definitely pin it as a comment down below. But regardless, I did want to give you a detailed close look at the new switch construction, even though I had to completely break one apart to sacrifice it. But hey, that's why I'm your favorite tech reviewer, right? 
So what we'll do now, yes, is gonna be a sound test of the brand new linear optic mechanical switches, but I'm also gonna do a sound test comparison to the original uh, linear switches from the Huntsman Tournament Edition. So you can hear these new switches versus how they used to sound. Okay, so as you heard, it is honestly completely night and day from their previous switches. So it's funny that something as little as those tiny red uh, silicone dampeners can make a world's difference like that. And in the end, when you think about it, yeah, it's not like too big of a production process because it's just like, you know, they, they make these probably in bulk of hundreds of thousands in a mold, so it's pretty easy but they had to completely redesign the stem to implement them in the side. So great job on that. And it does sound a lot better. We no longer have that pinging resonance from the, the bar when it would reset and come back up again, which was just killing the sound of the previous tournament edition. So great job, Razor. And as you also heard, stabilizers also aren't too bad. The integrated stabilizers are mounted to the PCB. They just snap into place. And I will say my enter key didn't sound as good as the rest of them. But again, all together for a mass produced keyboard like this, that doesn't actually, you know, like Band-Aid mod and factory lube, as far as I could tell, like I said, uh, the stabilizers even further, they sound pretty good. I'm not going to beat a dead horse talking about the Optimum Mechanical Switches because I've talked about them in both the Tournament Edition review as well as the Huntsman Elite keyboard, but they are some of the fastest switches you can buy on the market since it's using an infrared light beam on the inside to transfer the data to your PC. So with the linears, they're nice and smooth, they're quick. I want to say they actually add only one millimeter with 40 grams of force. So these are gonna be good for gaming. Now transitioning into some of the RGB, because believe it or not, this is actually a pretty new addition to this lineup here with the Huntsman Mini. We do actually have onboard lighting profiles. They can be customized and changed with function control and then one through seven. So function control one will turn the lighting effects off. Function control two will bring up, you know, a static color. So it's just one uh, lighting effect. But then from there, if you press function control two again, you can change the color. Function control three is their breathing effect. Function control four is their spectrum cycling. Function control five is the rainbow wave. Function control six is starlight. And function control seven is reactive. So on the board lighting profiles, on the fly macro recording. And while we do have five onboard profiles that you can access, which does save like your macros and keys that you reprogram, um, unfortunately custom lighting effects are still not saved to the onboard storage. So yes, you still have the control function one through seven for the lighting effects, but say you go into Synapse and you completely create your own crazy lighting effect, you unplug it and bring it to a new PC, that uh, lighting effect will not transfer and save onto this board, which is unfortunate. Um, it's all cloud-based still, so you would have to bring your your, uh, your keyboard to a new PC, download Synapse, sign in, and then it would be there. So kind of a bummer. I wish they would change that. And just to get the boring stuff out of the way, you can find on a spec sheet anywhere. Yes, end key rollover, so you can press all the keys at once and they'll register. 1000 hertz pulling. You guys are pretty familiar with Razer keyboards and their specs. And honestly, for a 60% keyboard, if you look at the market in terms of, you know, companies that mass produce gaming keyboards, the popular ones like HyperX, Corsair, Seal Series, which out of them actually give you a 60% keyboard? The answer is none. Razer is the only one. So I'm really happy to see that they really listened to community feedback over the years. And they started implementing features that have been commonly requested by the community. Like I said, 
USB-C, standard bottom row, PBT keycaps, and now smaller form factors. I for one love the board, I love the new switches, gaming on it has been really great because since we no longer have that pinging from the switches and the bar inside, uh, it just sounds so much better and they're smooth, linear switches, they feel great. This has been a killer addition to the Razer product lineup. So I'm definitely impressed with the brand new Razer Huntsman Mini with the improved linear switches due to those silicone dampeners. Um, and the only real con that I can think of or downside, as I just mentioned, is the fact that you can't save custom lighting effects and stuff to the actual onboard profiles, which is kind of a bummer, but it's honestly not a deal breaker at all. Um, going forward, this, this exact model is gonna be available in a few weeks. So as of today, you can get the Huntsman Mini in the purple clicky optomechanical switches with the red linears being available in a few weeks, they said. And what's kind of interesting is there's a price difference there, which you don't usually see. Uh, the opto mechanical ones with the clicky switches is available right now for 120 and the linear ones are gonna be available for a $10 surplus at 130 um, Kind of strange don't really understand that but again in the grand scheme of things when you look at 60% keyboards like this that are actually quality out there uh, 130 or 120 really isn't that bad of a price point. Yes, I'd love to see it, you know closer to 100 I think that would be a good sweet spot for it, but this will sell no doubt about it. Definitely a big thumbs up from me. And that'll wrap it up, guys. Hope you enjoyed the Razer Huntsman Mini review. If you did, also leave a thumbs up down below. Feel free to hit me up and follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Well, hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.